This is Eric Alco from Optimum Scouting and Sporting News, and you're listening to WHIP's NFL Draft Special. That's right. NFL Draft Special rolls along until 9 o'clock tonight on WHIP. Good chat there with Dieter Kurtenbach from Fox Sports. Greg Frank and John Cole got the first hour on the program tonight. And we got another guest now as Eric Galco introduces himself on the show. And he will now join us, Eric from Optimum Scouting and the Sporting News to talk NFL Draft. Eric, thanks a lot for your time and how are you? I'm doing well. Good. We and about, so uh, We got about 48 hours or 24 hours to draft. So yeah. Uh, so a lot to be figured out. Yeah, and let's get started right at the top of the draft. I mean, one thing that we don't think needs to be figured out that much is Miles Garrett going first overall. Everybody seems to have an opinion on him. I think he's going to be really good, just like everybody else. What do you think? Yeah, I think that'll be really good. I think he'll be, you know, one of the better defensive prospects coming out of the draft we've seen in the last 15, 20 years. Um, he's really, really impressive. He's a more complete player and a better athlete than Davion Clowney was. He was more dominant in college. He was as well, and, and people want to, you know, hype up Garrett Barnett as a very productive college player. You know, Miles Garrett had just four less sacks than him um, over the course of his career, and got way more in coverage and a better defensive end opposite than the day Sean Hall. I mean, Miles Garrett's a guy who's produced and been underappreciated in that aspect. He's developed so many things as a pass rusher, and the best part is he's really only still getting better in terms of kind of utilizing that athletic ability. So he'll be the first overall pick, and he'll be the best player from this draft class on either side of the ball. I think he'll be, you know, a defensive tone setter for the for the Browns as they start the rebuild process and take it to the next step. Other than Garrett, who are some guys at the top of the draft that you think of, of think of as really high floor guys, some really safe picks? Yeah, I think OJ Howard comes to mind immediately as a safer pick, and I was kind of hesitant to use that word since Aaron Curry back in I think 2011 or 2010 um, as a guy who was safe but didn't work out in the NFL. But Howard's certainly that guy. Those from all Adams Bellas, these two guys that are. Really high character, leadership guys, really well built physically, have a strong work ethic, coming from both those SEC programs that are known for putting out a lot of NFL players. So Adams and OJ Howard come from coming from LSU, Alabama, have two of the highest reputations from those schools, respectively, uh, I've heard in the last couple of years in those programs. So I think those three guys are, are kind of the highest four guys. They happen to be three of our top four players at Fordham News and Optimum County who have ranked in the 27th NFL draft. It seems like it's been quite some time since we've seen a tight end come out of college with this much accolades as O.J. Howard. So what comes to your mind, what is the last tight end to come out with you know this high of praise going into the NFL draft? Yeah, I think Vernon Davis comes to mind as a guy who went sixth overall, uh, fifth overall by the 49ers back you know in 2008 or early 2000s. Um, and I think he proved worth it because he was a tremendous athlete. I think mean, that was kind of a peak of tight end being of really great value in the NFL. I think Howard's a little bit different. You know, this top ten, I mentioned, you know, Jamal Adams at safety and O.J. Howard at tight end. Those are positions you don't usually hear going that high, and it's partially because they're talented, but also partially because it's not a great year to have a top ten pick. Um, a lot of this value starts in the early teens, well through the 40s, 40s and 50s. That's why you see a lot of teams, I think, the Bet the Bears, the Jaguars, the Titans, all really liking to move down because they know they're not going to get a guy of great value at the top four or five picks. So, I think we'll see those tight ends and safeties going high because it's not a great year to have a top ten pick. And I think overall, Howard is, is going to be you know, making the most of, of a position group that's that's great. But he's one of the best tight ends in the class and one of the safer picks in this class. How far do you think he could fall? Worst case scenario. On OJ Howard? Yes. Yeah, I think he could be the Jaguars, the Jets. Um, he could be in play for the Bills. I think the Arizona Cardinals will have a lot of interest uh, in him if he's there at thirteen, but. It's tough to say. I think I mentioned earlier today um, uh, on Twitter or Sporting News, wherever I posted that, that you know, a lot of teams like O.J. Howard in the top 13, 14 picks. But the way I've been told is that he's kind of treated as, hey, if our guy's not here, he's the next guy. So I think it will depend entirely how the draft board shakes out for teams. And I think if the, you know, the Bills don't get their quarterback, he might be their pick. If the Browns don't get their quarterback, he might be their pick at 12. And, and the Cardinals at 13, if they miss out a pass rusher. So, I think his floor is probably 13, and if by 14 he's still available, I think some people trip to get him. Uh, but I think kind of somewhere in the early teens makes sense. 
You talked about how it's maybe not the best year to be picking at the top of the draft. So maybe we see some surprises here. I mean, I think the thing that a lot of people are kind of waiting to happen for is Cleveland to move back in from 12 to get into the top 10 for Trubisky. But not just that, but who are a couple prospects that maybe aren't expected to go in the top 10 that you might look at and, and, and really every could raise eyebrows when Roger Goodell maybe announces a surprise name in the top 10? Yeah, I think one name to watch out for is, is Charles Harris in Missouri. Um, he's a guy I've been talking about for a while now uh, as a guy who could be a surprise top 10 pick. And hey, I know three or four teams that have top 10 grades on him, and I don't think I know every team's draft board at this point. So teams like Charles Harris in Missouri quite a bit. I think he goes somewhere in the top 16, 17 picks for sure, uh, maybe as high as six overall the Jets. So I think, you know, thank goodness it's not a, the draft's not in New York this year. Am I going to boo from, from Jets fans again? But I think Charles Harris could be a riser. Don Allen could be a faller. In the draft, if he doesn't go kind of third overall, he could be the ninth pick or even later after that, too. So it'll be a top ten where there's still a lot of volatility, and people will be surprised at kind of the order the NFL ranks these pass rushers and receivers. You just brought up the New York Jets, and one of the names I've seen in quite a few mock drafts for them selecting would be Marshawn Lattimore. And it appears to me that he's the consensus top corner in the draft. What do you think his ceiling would be? As a prospect or as a where he might get drafted? Both. Yeah, I think as a prospect, he has a lot of the similarities and upsides of a taller but still similarly built uh, Daryl Revis. I think he's that impressive. He's that able to kind of flip his hips and stay in control throughout his hip turn that you don't see often in cornerbacks. That's what made Daryl Revis so special. And Revis was the 11th overall pick out of Pittsburgh back when he was drafted. I think Lattimore could be in that same range. I think the highest still go outside chance for the Bears, but I have a pretty good feeling I know who the Bears are taking. I um, mind the Titans at five, or if they move down, he'll be their target. So the Titans at five, the Jets at six. And then a lot of teams in the early teams that if he's available, he'll be the pick. But I think he'll be the first cornerback taken. Marlon Humphrey at Alabama will surely follow him. You said you have a good feeling about the Bears. I've seen Jamal Adams a lot for them. you think that's where they go? I think it's Solomon Thomas. Uh, okay. I, I believe he'll be available for them at third overall, and I, I think he's the guy they like. They will take a quarterback in the first two or three rounds. I think Deshaun Kaiser's their guy, or if they can get Deshaun Watson in late round one, they'll take him. But what I've been told, the, the draft, as far as I have it right now, I think it's good team between now and midnight. Um, it's Miles Garrett at one, Leonard Fournette two, and Solomon Thomas three. Wow, and and I think that the Leonard Fournette two thing, that's kind of a sleeping giant here because, I mean, San Francisco is starting from scratch. There's no doubt about it. While Carlos Hyde obviously was one of their better players last year, I, that doesn't really mean much when you're a team in full rebuild, rebuild mode. So I think that would certainly be a little bit of a surprise. And then Solomon Thomas, a guy that I think a lot of people think is going to go at the top of the draft, but you, you mentioned you think Jonathan Allen could slide a little bit. I want to ask specifically about those two guys, Thomas and Jonathan Allen, in, in a draft that maybe isn't considered deep for interior line or five tech D ta- DNs, uh, you, you still think that those guys will end up? Uh, you said you like Thomas at three. How about Jonathan Allen? Yeah, I think Allen, I thought for a while, because he's been overall picked to the Bears, but Solomon Thomas is there. The Bears will take him instead. And, and Allen could be in for a bit of a fall. The Jaguars might be in play. I know they like Allen, but I'm not sure how high they want to take him. And you know, This is Tom Coughlin's first year, so he's going to want to take a high upside guy. David Caldwell's last year. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe his last year was going to have a good year, so I'm not sure he wants to take a risk with injury guys. So I think John Allen could fall to nine for the Bengals. That's why I'm projected right now. He could be an outside chance pick for the San Diego Chargers. They like him a lot, but I think right now the Bengals make the most sense for John Allen, whereas Solomon Thomas, if he's not the number two overall pick, which I don't believe he will, I think he'll be a Chicago Bear. And if he's not a Chicago Bear, he'll be a Jaguar and won't last much longer than that. I've actually seen quite a few mock drafts as well that have Jonathan Allen uh, falling out of that top three, and like you said, maybe as far as number nine, uh, very few out of the top ten. Who is the one guy in the top ten that you could see that's projected top ten many mock drafts that could fall? We've see, heard possibly Leonard Fournette. You just mentioned you don't think for him, but who do you think in the top ten could you see have the biggest uh, drop? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know exactly yet where Christian McCaffrey is going to go. I think we've seen a lot of consensus uh, on the Carolina Panthers and you know, I, I, some sources I've talked to around the league feel that McCaffrey is a pick for Carolina. Others feel that he could be not taken in the top ten. So I think McCaffrey is, is one of the wild cards. I hope they got to get a better feel for by the end of the night tonight. But, uh, but I think the Philadelphia Eagles are really in play for McCaffrey, whether it's a trade up, whether they stay put at fourteen and still get him. Um, you know, I think McCaffrey is going to be really in play for the Eagles because I know how much they value him. He is the player they've covered for a long time, and I think if they can move up to Seven above the Panthers and kind of secure him. I think they can certainly look into that. But um, but overall, I think McCaffrey is a guy I'm not positive yet will be a top ten pick. It seems likely, but I think with all this buzz, it could be a reactionary thing that he falls out of the top ten. Now, if the Eagles were to trade up, what would it take to move up to number seven, though? 
Yeah, I don't know if the Eagles want to trade their second round pick this year. And and by if they trade their first round pick and their second round pick to get Christian McCaffrey, which is usually what it would take, then they're sacrificing their first round pick and second round pick this year, and they have no second rounder, I believe, next year because of the Carson Wentz trade. That's so correct. They're really handicapping themselves by doing that. So I think if there's any way that this team can either include a player um, or include third and fifth and sixth round picks or, or maybe a next year's third, whatever it may be, it's going to be really hard to kind of find enough picks to move up, which is why only the Eagles have. Now, I've been told the Eagles have explored moving up. Um, they are looking into it. Whether or not it'll be a reasonable offer, I'm not sure. The Chargers don't really want to move down. They seem spelled on, on having the offers available to play with them, and they're not a team that usually moves up or down the draft board. So the Eagles might have to get the fifth overall to secure Christian McCaffrey if they want to move up. But I think right now it's going to be tough to do so without trading their first and second round picks. But, hey, I think this Eagles team is not that far away. I think McCaffrey is the guy they want to kind of be a centerpiece in their offense. They already have receivers. Their offensive line that's healthy is healthy. It's certainly strong, and they want to give Carson Wentz the weapon. I think getting Christian McCaffrey now might be their decision to say, hey, let's let's go out there and make a playoff run this year. Talk about a different offense in Philadelphia. If they went from last year having little to no weapons for Carson Wentz to adding Alshon Jeffrey, uh, Torrey Smith, uh, Christian McCaffrey and company, that would be very interesting to see from the birds. But you talk about the possibility of the Philadelphia Eagles moving up. Another team we hear uh, quite often about the possibility of them moving into the top 10, uh, the Cleveland Browns as well. We've heard of them possibly uh, considering taking a quarterback after taking Miles Garrett. What do you think of um, the quarterback situation? Do you see them moving up? And who? where do you see the quarterbacks going, uh, some of the top-rated guys? Yeah, you know, talking to people around the league, I, I've been kind of hearing and learning for a while the Buffalo Bills wanted Mitch Trubisky. Now, it's been a little silent on their end for a while now. I'm not, I'm not as confident as I used to be, but I'll still hold firm that you know, Mitch Trubisky will lead the 2017 NFL draft as a Buffalo Bill. They've had the most interest year-round. Um, they've paired for Gula and went to North Carolina and visited with Mr. Pitsky, something very similar to the Eagles fans to recognize what Carson went last year and their owner um, in Philadelphia. So I think the Bills have scandalous in Mr. Pitsky. They have explored moving up. They are considering moving up. I think they've been very good about keeping it quiet. As for the Browns, you know, Saucy Brown, they're basically their GM and, and Hugh Jackson, their head coach, are going to meet tonight. And I know Saucy Brown, along with ownership, is pushing for Mr. Pitsky. But here's the fact that I think matters most to the Browns and Mr. Pitsky is that if you believe Mitch Trubisky, if anyone does, that he's a top-10 worthy quarterback and could be one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL in, in the next couple of years, you take him first overall. And Miles Garrett is the best player in this draft class, but if you believe Mitch Trubisky is a chance to be a top-10 worthy quarterback in this draft class, he's worth more than Miles Garrett can ever be. So I think the fact that the Browns are not taking Mitch Trubisky first overall, I don't really buy that they're going to move up that far to get him. I could be wrong, and we'll see what happens between now and midnight when I get more information, which I'm sure I will. Um, but I think right now I'm going to Buffalo Bills get Mr. Bisky as their first quarterback. And then after him, the Kansas City Chiefs could be a team to move up for Patrick Mahomes in the top 12 picks, not to secure him. So I think those are the first two quarterbacks off the board and an outside chance that Sean Watson go someplace there as well. On the way out here with Eric Galco from Optimum okay. Scouting and Sporting News. Eric, you talked about Buffalo and Trubisky. That's certainly an interesting fit. Uh, if they don't go that way and uh, st- to stick with Tyrod Taylor, who they restructured with, I think they need to get them more weapons, and they're sitting at that number 10 spot. You would think, assuming O.J. Howard is gone by then, they'd have their choice between Mike Williams or Corey Davis. Do you think that if it's not Trubisky, that might be where they go? Yeah, I think if they don't go Trubisky, which, again, I, I believe they still will, but I know Mike Williams, Clemson, O.J. Howard of Alabama, and that linebacker, Don Reddick of Temple, are all really high on their board. And I think it's going to be one of those three guys if it's on Mr. Trubisky. Corey Davis. So they like Corey Davis. I don't think any team wants to pick Corey Davis in the top 20 picks. I guess Buffalo is wow. the one team that has the most interest um, to do so. And the Titans, if Mike Williams is already gone, and they miss on safeties. But I think overall, Corey Davis is more of a late first or early second round player. But Mike Williams, O.J. Howard, and, and Hassan Reddick are the three guys in the Bills that they don't go quarterback. All right, Eric Galco from Optimum Scouting and Sporting News. We appreciate your time. Enjoy the draft. Thanks, man. You guys, too. All right.